players have risen the most in dynasty value over the last month? We're talking about that in today's video. If you like dynasty content, make sure to like and subscribe. We put out dynasty content all year long as well as redraft as well. And uh, at the beginning of every month, I'm a little late on this one, but I like to look at the dynasty market and how it's changed over the last month. Who's rising? Who's falling? Today is a risers video. There will be a fallers video tomorrow. And it's it's exciting because we've had um, a month worth of NFL football. And so it's exciting to see how the dynasty market is changing. It's really, really important as dynasty players to keep tabs on the market, who's rising and who's falling. Um, how are people perceiving other people? Because that's how you take advantage of either buying low or selling high. Starting off with the quarterback position, we have Baker Mayfield moving up um, five spots here. Uh, I was actually wrong. It's actually nine spots. He's moved up from QB 24 to QB 15. So that's a little bit of a typo there. Nine spots is pretty significant when you're in the top 24 already. And uh, yeah, Baker Mayfield has been awesome to start the year. Like absolutely awesome. He just had another good game last week, uh, or sorry, yesterday, Thursday night football game. Um, he was awesome. He was already the QB three coming in. Um, he's going to stay in the top five after he threw three touchdowns, ran for 40 yards. Um, and, you know, he's under contract with the Buccaneers, and they were pretty smart in what, how they they formulated uh, their contract. is Basically, it was a one-year deal, essentially. And, um, you know, if he kind of flamed out, they could have moved on. If he's playing well like he is, then they keep him. So I think he's going to be a buck for the next couple of years at least. He has Mike Evans. He has Chris Godwin. They drafted Jalen McMillan. Uh, they have Trey Palmer. Hopefully they keep supplementing him with good – talent on the offensive uh, side of the ball. And I think Baker Mayfield to say he's going to be top five um, is a little bit crazy. You know, he could keep it up this year for sure. Quarterback play is down and he's one of the guys that's, that's killing it almost over 20 points. Uh, three of the first four weeks. Uh, I think he had another 20 point game um, in yesterday's game. So um, to say he's going to be top five, I think is a little bit of an overreaction, but can he easily be top 10? Yeah, easily easily. So if you have Baker Mayfield and a lot of you had him as like your QB three, you should be sitting pretty right now. You can always sell high on him. Everyone should be available to sell high and super flex, but um, you know, I do think you have a solid low end QB one at worst uh, over the next couple of seasons. Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold is another one. If you guys listen to this show, uh, when Sam Darnold signed with the Vikings, I, I make, you know, buy low stash videos almost every month. Um, for, for Dynasty. If you guys were uh, uh, subscribed to this channel, I told you to buy low on Sam Darnold back in March. I said, there's a really good chance that the Vikings roll with Sam Darnold as their starting quarterback. Now, I didn't expect, you know, I, I, I basically said, like, I don't know if it's guaranteed they take a quarterback. They were sitting at, I think, the 12th pick or 11th pick. They moved up a couple spots, took J.J. McCarthy. It's going to be very interesting to see what this team does um, with – um, JJ McCarthy and the Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold right now is the QB four on the on the year. Uh, he has three games over twenty points in four point per passing touchdown, and his other his his worst game of the year is at fifteen point six. Like the guy is playing awesome. He has talent all over the field to throw to Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison. Aaron Jones, Ty Chandler's a good backup. Jalen Naylor is a good wide receiver three. TJ Hawkinson hasn't even played yet this year. Um, that's only going to help him even more. Um, he can rush the ball a little bit. He has a game of over 30 yards rushing, another one with 15 yards rushing. I'm really interested, interested to see what the Vikings do here because I want Darnold for fantasy, for my dynasty team. If I have him, I want him to stay on the Vikings because I think Kevin O'Connell's a great offensive coach and the offensive talent there is, is amazing. That being said, they drafted J.J. McCarthy. What I think they might do, especially because they don't know with McCarthy, they're not going to get to see him all year, right? Not even in a in a cleanup game at the end of the year. They're not going to get to see him. Um, obviously, they see him in practice, but I think what they might do is they might do a Baker Mayfield type of contract. And they basically say, Sam, Darnold, here is a multi-year contract, but we can get out of it after a year. Prove it to us one more year. And if you do then you're going to be our starting quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised, guys. Like It's going to be very interesting to see what the uh, the Vikings do here. I mean, they're 4-0, um, and they look like early lock to, to make the playoffs. So 
Justin Fields is another quarterback that has risen 10 spots from QB 29 to QB 19. Justin Fields was another quarterback that I was telling you, buy low on this guy, buy low on this guy. I think he could take over the starting role. Um, just be, you know, are we really that afraid of Russell Wilson? Who's looked washed the last couple of years. I know he put up good counting numbers last year, but it was a lot of it was in garbage time, you know, buy low on Justin Fields and, and it's coming to fruition. Steelers are three and one. They're going to roll with Justin Fields at least a couple more weeks. He obviously gives you that rushing floor that we all crave in fantasy football. Um, he's QB six on the year. And that's with two, um, two games of under 12 points, which just shows you he's capable of the 30 point games, right? Like he's capable of the massive 30 point games. And just to put it in perspective, there's been uh, one, two, three, four, four 30 point games this year. In, in in for quarterbacks and one of them is Justin Fields. So 32 points last week. Uh, he's throwing the bell. Well, he's getting a little bit more acclimated to the system. Justin Fields is a potential league winner. If you bought low on him in, in, in super flex leagues, which I kind of told you to try and do. And then Jaden Daniels all the way up to QB two from QB 11 to QB two. Awesome. Awesome to see amazing that he's gone this far. Um, he's basically untouchable at this point at 23 and, you know, 23, 24 year old who um, is lighting up the league and has a rushing floor is super accurate. It's QB two on the year, three games of 25 points or more this year in fantasy. Um, he is the uh, QB one on the year um, QB two in points per game behind Jordan love. Amazing stuff here for, for Jaden Daniels. If you drafted him, I still, you know, still think Caleb was the right choice in the sense of like, you know, give Caleb some time, but man, Jaden Daniels was a nice uh, consolation prize. If you were sitting there at the pick number three into the running backs here, um, we have uh, Alvin Kamara has moving up quite a bit. Again, 11 spots when you're already in the top 22 um, is really, really nice. Obviously it's because of what Alvin Kamara is doing, which I don't really understand fantasy. Like, Sometimes us fantasy managers in the running back position, we overinflate age a little bit too much. Did we really think that Calvin Kamara wasn't going to be good this year? Like, why was he all the way down at RB22? And we try and it, we make the mistake of looking beyond the year coming, the season to come when it comes to running backs. There's only a few guys that we should be looking beyond 2024. Uh, in terms of like, okay, I have an asset beyond 2024. You know, Jonathan Taylor, Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, guys like that. Guys, everyone else, and there's, you know, obviously I missed some, but most other players, uh, running backs, kind of fall into what can you do for me in 2024? And Alvin Kamara was a perfect example of that. We knew Alvin Kamara was going to be good this year. We knew, maybe not RB1 good, which is what he is right now, but we knew he was going to be good. Why did we have him all the way down at 22? And then, oh, wow, he's good. And we move him up 11 spots. We should have been valuing him around this, um, you know, as a top 15 guy already. It's just kind of crazy. Makes you think, like, for for future um, seasons and for future assets. Like, if, you're, if you have a running back who's going to produce in 2024, they should automatically be in the top 20. And if they have someone that's going to produce like Alvin Kamara can – they should be in the top 15, whether they're old or not. That being said, you know, Alvin Kamara gets hurt. Your, your value is gone, right? So keep that in mind for you, Alvin Kamara managers. J.K. Dobbins from RB48 to RB25 in the last month. Um, even even of a, uh, an even bigger jump if you look at from August to, to now. You should trade uh, J.K. Dobbins. You should trade him, guys. We should be trading J.K. Dobbins. I don't think that J.K. Dobbins is going to be a top 12 guy. I know after the first two weeks it was looking like it. They are going to want to run the ball a lot. Um, he's still going to um, you know, give up carries to Gus Edwards. Maybe he is the lead back. I don't see J.K. Dobbins rushing the ball you know, over 20 times in a game that much this season. He's not going to get a lot of cat pass um, uh, catches. Um, you should sell him J.K. Dobbins, right? Like we should sell high on him. We really should because – you couldn't sell, you couldn't give the guy away for free two months ago, right? And now he shot up all the way to RB25. Um, I, I would sell high on him. What I will say is I do think if you have him, you have a RB2 on your team. I don't think he's going to be top 10. Um, I think he's probably going to be top 20, top 24. Maybe he sneaks into the top 15. 
but that's kind of how I, I think of him. And if people are value valuing him a little bit more than you should probably sell high on him. And just, even if you're a contending team, I think it's a big mistake that we say, Oh, you can only be, you know, you cannot sell players that are producing if you're contending. Well, that's how you stay relevant. You sell players high, even if they're going to help you win this year, you get back other pieces and hopefully you've built a team that can survive without J.K. Dobbins. That's another thing. A lot of people have a team. If you're a contending team with J.K. Dobbins, you weren't relying on J.K. Dobbins going into this year. He's just like an added extra piece, right? So um, I don't mind trading him away whether I'm contending or not. Um, Jordan Mason from RB53 to RB21. And this is why we sell high on running backs. Running backs are so volatile. You don't see wide receivers jumping up, um, you know, uh, 30 spots into the top 20. Like you generally don't see that. You see them jump up 30 spots when they're ranked, you know, uh, uh, wide receiver 60 to, to wide receiver 40 or something. Um, but you don't see guys ranked like wide receiver 50 jumping up to wide receiver 20. Like that's not very common when it comes to wide receivers. And this is why we, we, we kind of sell running backs when we can, when we can get really, really good value for them. And we, we get guys like Jordan Mason in a throw in. We get guys like J.K. Dobbins as a throw-in, right? We get guys like, you know, Tank Bigsby as a throw-in. And, you know, and that throw-in turns into a good piece. A guy like Raheem Mostert last year. You tear down from a top 15 running back, Kendra Miller, right? Um, you tear down from Kendra Miller, you get a second-round pick, and then they throw in Raheem Mostert. Oh, hey, I just won that trade because Raheem Mostert's the RB2, right? So, Jordan Mason, I understand why he's here. Be interesting to see how this team is or how they use him when um, when Christian McCaffrey is back. Hopefully, he's back in November. Um, Brian Robinson. Um, Brian Robinson is slowly entering the category of guys that I am looking beyond, um, you know, twenty twenty four with because the team loves him. The team absolutely loves him. I was not a big Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson fan coming out of college. I'll be the first to admit it. Thought he was slow, didn't think he was that athletic. Even over the last couple of years, I didn't really buy into Brian Robinson. Well, obviously I was wrong. Brian Robinson has been awesome. He's averaging um, 77 rushing yards a game. Um, he's averaging about two catches a game, right? Uh, about 17 yards. He has three total touchdowns. Um, on the year in half PPR, Brian Robinson is the RB11. He's on a really good offense. Um, you know, that we didn't really expect this offense to be this good this early. And I think, honestly, we can pencil in Brian Robinson for one more year at least, right? His rookie contract, I think, is up after next year. I'm penciling in Brian Robinson at this point as a, a really good uh, high-end RB2, low-end RB1 piece from the rest of this year till the end of 2025, assuming he doesn't get hurt. So he's kind of entered that category of I can look a little bit beyond with Brian Robinson. Um, awesome to see. And uh, yeah, he proved me wrong for sure. Two um, two rookies that are shooting up. RB40 to RB19 for Braylon Allen and Bucky Irving, RB44 to RB20. Um, of these two, I think Bucky has a better chance as taking over the backfield. I don't think Braylon Allen's ever going to take over the backfield from Brees Hall. I think Brees Hall is too talented of a player to, to – you know, for that to happen. Now he has looked better than him, but there is something to, you know, the defense is focused on shutting down Brees Hall when he's in there, right? When, when he's out, they let up a little bit and they focus somewhere else. And that's why Braylon Allen maybe gets a little bit more, um, some running room, right? Some space to run. Um, I would sell high on both these guys. I'm just saying it right now. Like, I don't know if either one of these guys are going to be startable fantasy pieces this year. Bucky, I give a little bit more of a of a chance. Braylon Allen, I don't think you know. I know he's been flex worthy um, in 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 uh, the last couple of weeks, right? But it's been very touchdown dependent, big play dependent, things like that. You know, he's RB thirty two on the season, and a lot of that's because he had a, a two touchdown game. I doubt he has another two touchdown game if Brees Hall is healthy. Um, I would be selling high on Braylon Allen because people are a little bit crazy on where they're ranking him. Um, you know, people are ranking him over, you know, Aaron Jones, who's going to be a top 10 running back this year. 
um, over James Conner, who's going to be top 15 this year, right? Um, you know, over guys like that. And that's a little crazy to me. Like, I will happily trade Braylon Allen. You give me um, James Conner and a, and a second round pick or even a third round pick, I'll do it happily. Because we're assuming, you know, Braylon Allen is going to have a role somewhere. But what if he just never has that role? Like, we see guys like this every single year. Kendra Miller was the the poster boy for it last year. Kendra Miller was a top 15, top 20 asset because we thought he was going to get an expanded role. We thought he was good. We thought he was going to take over, you know, the backfield, blah, 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 blah. Guess where Kendra Miller is these days. Kendra Miller is, is the RB 60, right? So both these guys, Braylon and Bucky, I like them. I think they're talented players. I'd be selling high seeing that they're both tw top 20 assets at the running back position. I'm selling high on them. I am. Gives me more flexibility. Tink Bigsby has also risen from 60 to 39, and I understand why. Um, it is what it is. Like, I'll be interested to see. One thing I will point out, what if they trade Travis Etienne? Like, I'm, not, I'm interested to see the trade deadline this year. They pushed it back a week or two. Does that cause more teams um, to sell some of their guys? We're already hearing about Devontae Adams. What if, what if Etienne gets traded? I don't think they want to... I know they. I think they exercised his his fifth year option. I don't think they want to extend him, right? So, like, what if they just trade him, get what they can for him, and then take Bigsby becomes their guy? Just something out to throw out there. Some wide receivers to talk about. Malik Neighbors is uh, the wide receiver two. That is amazing. He's only behind Justin Jefferson. I think we're overreacting a little bit. That being said, Malik Neighbors is a perfect, perfect example of. Um, of us, you know, guys like Garrett Wilson, Drake London, George Pickens, Chris Olave, we blame it on the quarterback. Oh, they're not good because of the quarterback. They're not guys like Malik Neighbors and Justin Jefferson are saying there's some guys that are just different. They don't, it doesn't, Odell Beckham back in the day, they're just different. They don't need the quarterback necessarily to be this stud and they'll just be target hogs and beasts, right? Um, Malik Neighbors, unfortunately, won't play this week. Um, I think it's a little bit of an overreaction to put him over guys like C.D. Lamb, uh, but you know it, they're all in the same tier. C.D. Lamb, Marvin Harrison, Amon Ra, Jamar Chase, and the next guy, Nico Collins, we're all in the same tier here. Nico Collins, man, I never expected him to be this good. Um, he's on pace for over 2,000 yards. He's leading the league in receiving yards. He's tied to one of the better young quarterbacks in the entire NFL. It doesn't matter, and and I hate, and I hate that you know guys like Drake London. Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson were going over Nico Collins in redraft. And I hate that I fell for that as well because I think we need to stop trying to predict how offenses are going to play out. It's one thing, you know, we have to project a little bit in fantasy football. That's just what we have to do. But we shouldn't try and project like what an offense is going to do. Oh, they brought in Diggs and, you know, we're worried about Nico Collins and blah, blah, blah. It's it's dumb. It's dumb, man. Nico Collins is amazing. Um, he's in that tier with with Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, you know, CD Lamb, Malik Neighbors. He's in that tier. The guy is awesome. Um, I believe he's the wide receiver one on the year. Um, or maybe that is Malik. No, it's Nico Collins in half PPR. I think Malik Neighbors has him in, in full PPR. He does. Uh, but Nico Collins is an absolute beast. Brian Thomas Jr. from wide receiver 22 to wide receiver 12. He's been a surprise this year. Um, he is um, a uh, top 16 wide receiver, wide receiver 15 and half PPR. And that's with the, the Jags and, and Trevor Lawrence not even playing well. A lot of people are saying, like, this guy is really damn good. So if you could still somehow buy low on him, because his numbers are good. They're not, like, amazing. You know, he's wide receiver 15, so that's hard to deny. But 12.7, this is half PPR, 12.7, 10.4, 7.3. Okay, and then he had the big game, 18.9 last week. If you could somehow still buy low on Brian Thomas, um, this is probably your last chance to do it. I think he's going to be a top 10 wide receiver uh, for a while now. And, um, yeah, he, he looks awesome. Uh, better than I thought he would look at least to start the year. Jameson Williams. We have two former first round picks that fell very, very far in their keep trade cut rankings. Quinton Johnston and uh, Jameson Williams. Jameson Williams up from wide receiver 47 to 26. Quinton Johnston from 80 to 39. Um, again, both these guys, first round picks that disappointed uh, for, for Jameson his first couple of years. Uh, Jameson Williams at one point 
Um, at one point was all the way down to the wide receiver 53, I think is the lowest he got wide receiver 53. Um, and, um, I think it teaches us a good lesson here with these guys is, um, you know, you know, Jamison Williams, like he he's wide receiver 14 on the year. He's doing it like he has had three good games, one bad game. The last couple of weeks, the volume hasn't been there. Um, Quinton Johnson's the wide receiver uh, 30 on the year. Um, I don't necessarily believe that Quinton Johnston should be ranked this high. I think I would maybe sell high on him potentially. But I think what it teaches us for, for Dynasty is when you have first-round picks and they start to fall really, really far, it's always not a terrible idea to buy super low on them because this is – and the biggest reason for that, I'm not saying they're all going to work out. I'm not even saying Quinton Johnson and Jamison Williams are going to work out. Um, the biggest reason why you do it is because they're going to get the opportunity to at least do something. They're going to get two, three years to do something because the team invested a first-round pick in them. They're not just going to give up after, on them after one year, right? So they're going to get the chance, right? And sometimes that's all we need in fantasy is the opportunity and the chance. And um, so both these guys, Quincy Johnson and Jameson, I think we're solid by lows in the off season. Uh, they're kind of paying off for you right now. Um, is it going to last? I don't know, but just something to keep in mind with these first round picks, especially in a guy like Jameson Williams, a situation where it's like, well, his first year was a wash. His second year, he got suspended. Um, you know, there was kind of things we could point to, to be like, well, this is why he's not producing Jaden Reed from wide receiver 32 to wide receiver 14. Um, Interesting one. I kind of feel like I want to sell high on Jaden Reed a little bit. I think he's a great player. You know, what's interesting is like um, guys like Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson, who's now hurt, but now Dontavian Wicks, they're running more routes and playing more snaps than Jaden Reed. Um, not not saying like, you know, Jaden Reed is, is a bad option or whatever, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm fine with where he's at. I'm also, he's also one of those players that I'm like perfectly fine with if someone wants to throw. Um, if, for example, I in a league traded um, Jaden Reed and I got Brandon Ayuk, Theo Johnson, and a pick. I would have thought about trading straight up Ayuk for Reed. I probably wouldn't have done it because it's kind of a lateral move or maybe a slight downgrade um, from the, um, you know, um, I uh, Reed to Ayuk. But like, that's the type of trades you could potentially get for Jaden Reed. People are very, very excited about him. And I'm okay with like tearing down to a Jalen Waddle and Iuke, um, a JSN, a, a even Rashi Rice, Devontae Smith, Roman Dunze. Even these guys are lower than, than Jaden Reed. I'm fine with tearing down and getting a pick or another asset. And um, I think it's the right process. Is it going to work out? I don't know. Jaden Reed just could be amazing. He obviously has been amazing with Jordan Love, um, but um, just something to think about. Like he's a, one of those receivers. Like I'm okay with potentially tearing down from him, um, but also I'm okay if you just want to keep him. To finish up, guys, we have some tight ends here. Um, Eric All, his time is coming, guys. Again, if you can buy low on him, you're you're kind of running out of time to do it. Uh, he looks pretty good in the limited snaps that he has. The Bengals like him, so if you can buy low on Eric All. Um, now's your chance. Now's your chance to do it. Uh, Dallas Goddard was one of these guys where I was like, why in the offseason? Why is Dallas Goddard like tight end 20, tight end 18? Why is Luke Musgrave ahead of Dallas Goddard? It didn't, didn't make sense to me. Um, like Dallas Goddard, I know he's been hurt and stuff. When he's healthy, he's been, always been a top 10 tight end the last, basically since Zach Ertz left, right? And now we look at him. Now I know he's benefiting from AJ Brown and Devontae Smith missing time. That being said, I still think when those guys are back, he's going to be one of the better tight ends in the league. So if you did buy low on on Dallas Goddard, like I was kind of saying all off season, then good for you because you have a, a you know a top ten tight end at worst. Isaiah Likely from sixteen to nine. Um, I think he got even higher than that. He's probably fallen a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Let us see here. He got to tight end seven. Oh, he got to tight end six. I saw that and I said, we need to sell high on this guy right now. Um, he hasn't done anything since that week one performance. Baltimore's offense is really weird right now. Um, Isaiah likely is a good player. 
it's just there's not enough pass volume on that team. Lamar's going to run the ball. Derrick Henry's going to run the ball. Zay Flowers is going to get targets. Mark Andrews should get targets. Um, you know, Isaiah likely will get his, all this stuff, but it's just there's not enough volume, in my opinion. Absolutely not enough volume. So um, it's unfortunate, but you should have probably sold high on Isaiah likely um, when he was up there at tight end six. He's still at tight end nine, by the way. Noah Gray is an interesting one here from 41 to 29. Um, you know, they might be using him a lot more now that Rushy Rice is out. They might be relying a little bit more on the tight ends. Travis Kelsey's definitely getting old. You know, Noah Gray's had two solid games, um, three for 37, four for 40. For tight ends this year, that's not that bad. I bet you, I'm going to double check, Noah Gray somehow is a top 30 tight end. Uh, but, you know, he could be the Aaron Parrott. I know they drafted like Jared Wiley and stuff like that, but Noah Gray's been in that system now for several years. He could be kind of the Aaron Parrott to, um, to Travis Kelsey. And I think they gave him a contract. Um, they did a three year, $18 million contract. So they might kind of be prepping him and grooming him to be the replacement for Travis Kelsey. And then finally Tucker Kraft from tight end 22 to tight end 14. I've been saying since they were drafted in 2023 guys drafted in 2023, I've been saying you had to, in the dynasty rookie drafts after the 2023 NFL draft, Luke Musgrave was going in the second round and Tucker Graft was going undrafted. And I was looking at it like, why? Why? Tucker Craft has like just as good of a chance to be um, better or as good as Luke Musgrave. And then Luke Musgrave took over. He was the starter for the first six, seven weeks. Tucker Craft came in and was basically putting up the production Luke Musgrave was doing. And then... Um, even a little bit better. And then the playoff games happened and, and Luke Musgrave was not on the injury report during the playoff games last year. And they didn't even play him. They started Tucker Kraft. And I was telling people all off season, guys, they showed their hand. They had a healthy Luke Musgrave and they decided to roll with Tucker Kraft in the playoffs. If they liked Luke Musgrave that much more, they would have started him over Tucker Kraft in the playoffs because it's the freaking playoffs. And I was telling people, we need to be selling high on Luke Musgrave, buying low on Tucker Craft. And here we are. Tucker Craft just had a massive game, and um, he's tight end nine on the year, right? And he's going to be their tight end one. So that is the Dynasty Risers, guys. We will be back with the Dynasty Fallers. Um, so make sure to check out for that. And, yeah, like and subscribe. Help us get to 700 by the end of the month. Appreciate you all. Catch you all in the next video.